So today I'm talking about one of my favorite topics, galaxy clusters, because it's what I research as well. And also one of my favorite images. So galaxy clusters are essentially what their names tells you, clusters of galaxies, hundreds if not thousands of galaxies that orbit around one another. And they're held together by their gravity. So these are like gravitational giants of our universe. They're 10 to the 14 solar masses, typically. That's a lot heavier than our sun. They're the largest gravitationally bound objects that we know of in our universe. Also, because of their gr huge gravitational potential wells, this heats up gas to hundreds of millions of Kelvin in temperature, and that radiates very brightly in X-rays. So we can see with our X-ray telescopes, this bright, hot gas. This is one of my favorite pictures. It's the bullet cluster. It's not a single image. It's not taken by a single telescope, but it's a composite of many images. You can see stars and galaxies taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. So this is optical and infrared light. So you can see very clearly, very high resolution stars and galaxies. But what we also have here is these two distinct blobs. So even though it's called a bullet cluster, this isn't really a single galaxy cluster. It's actually two clusters that have collided together. And you can see this giant region of stars and galaxies here, and then this smaller sub galaxy cluster here. What we're seeing in the pink, or reddish color, is imagery taken by NASA's Chandra telescope. And this is a space telescope that observes in the X-ray. And like I just said, galaxy clusters, because of their huge gravitational potential wells, they heat up this gas to millions of degrees Kelvin that shine brightly in X-rays. So you can see this hot gas. And because of this collision, they've already collided, they're moving away from each other. You can see the gas has shocked and you can see even like a bow front on this part of the gas after it's kind of plowed through each other. What we're also seeing here is this blue or even purpley light color. This is a mass map taken by ESO's WFI instrument. The mass map tells us where most of the mass is in our system. It's determined from the weak gravitational lensing data. So recall that gravitational lensing is when you have like a huge massive object with gravity as light from distant galaxies passes through the vicinity of this gravitational potential, it distorts this light. And so you see it in like the distortions of the galaxies by measuring the ellipticities and the distortions of these faraway galaxies, you can figure out where most of the mass is as the light has traveled through it towards us. This paints a really interesting picture because what we're seeing here is that most of the mass, it doesn't follow the gas. It does follow the stars and galaxies. There's not much like in between. When the galaxy cluster collide, they pass through each other because the galaxies are just so far apart. It's mostly empty space, so they pass straight through. But the mass also follows that. It's passed right through. It hasn't shocked like the gas. And so this image is our best evidence that we have. It's our only direct evidence, essentially, we have of dark matter. Dark matter is dark in that it doesn't emit any light, but it doesn't absorb any light either. It's the missing piece of our universe because it explains, for example, galaxy rotation curves and other observables that we have. It makes what we see in the universe make sense. We think that galaxy clusters contain 90% dark matter, about 9% hot gas, and only 1% of like stars and galaxies. And so if dark matter makes up most of our galaxy cluster, then we would expect most of this mass to be observations of dark matter. And so dark matter is weakly interacting. It doesn't really interact with anything. And even though we say weakly interacting, that doesn't mean that it interacts with the weak force. It only interacts through gravity. So it doesn't shock. It passes right through and causes these distinct kind of separations. The bullet cluster also provides the best evidence against a alternative theory of gravity known as MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. So some people don't believe that 
dark matter exists because we've never been able to detect it. So some people have come up with alternative theories and MOND is one of the most common ones. This is where you modify Newton's law such that at high accelerations, you expect gravity to be less than at low accelerations. So it's just like a factor that you add on into Newton's laws. And it, it makes these like galaxy rotation curves work. But MON doesn't work for the bullet cluster because the separation between the dark matter or the mass and the hot gas is just too large to be explained by a small factor. And actually the original proposer of MOND even said that the bullet cluster proves that dark matter exists. And since the bullet cluster, we know of many galaxy clusters just like this one. Here you can see some of the examples of colliding galaxy clusters and their measurements. And these are actually really important because by measuring the offsets between the mass and the hot gas, we can get constraints on the cross section of dark matter, so how large they are. If dark matter is larger, um, then you would expect them to be less drag, so moving less apart from the, the hot gas. But if they're smaller, you would expect it to move past even, even more. But this isn't the end because there are examples that disagree. And so, for example, this is known as the train wreck cluster, another galaxy cluster. But if you look at the X-rays, the weak lensing, and the optical separately, see the lensing has this like sausage-like shape. The X-ray gas is all squished together. What we know about dark matter, what we think we know about dark matter, it cannot explain this galaxy cluster. So it's not the end of it yet. There's still loads to learn from these types of systems. Think about it, it's as if you had all the stars running a long distance race where they all stay in lane. And if you really ran a long distance race that way, the people in the outside lanes would be hugely disadvantaged because they've got a whole lot further to go. This is Guildford, again here in, here in Britain. This is the, the sort of phenomenon that most people would have seen. These afterglows were very widely reported and, and very beautiful. 